What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at large and today we are in St. Louis, Missouri and I'm here to talk about the brutal murder of Tina Issa, a murder that was done by no other than her own mother and father, a murder that was actually caught on audio tape. Let's talk about this gruesome, gruesome crime. We're gonna go back in time to the early 1960s down in Brazil. You have a recent immigrant from the West Bank named Zine Issa. While living in Brazil, he meets up with a woman that would become his future wife, Maria Issa. Zane was a practicing Muslim and Maria at the time was a Catholic. So they're living in Brazil, and in total, they had seven children. Palestina Isa, or Tina for short, that's what her friends called her, was born December 3rd, 1972, down in Brazil. And for a while, the family, they bounced, bounced around the world. Uh, after living in Brazil for a while, they ended up moving to Puerto Rico for a bit. Uh, ended up going to stay with Zane's family in the West Bank. And then eventually in 1985, they immigrated to the United States. And they immigrated to St. Louis. St. Louis has a pretty decent-sized Muslim community. So when they immigrated here, Zane opened up a small grocery store somewhere in this uh, general uh, vicinity, this area. And Tina went to high school here. She went to Roosevelt. And unlike her other siblings, uh, she quickly became uh, enraptured in American culture. When she came here, she didn't really speak much of any English. And she learned it fairly quickly. And she just fell in love with American pop culture, uh, American TV, uh, American music. She loved uh, rap music and pop So she's going to Roosevelt High and her parents Zane and Maria they did not like the fact that she was uh, Hanging out with Americans. They didn't like the fact that she was participating in high school sports uh, she played soccer for her high school and when she talked about getting a job Zane told his daughter hey listen I don't want you working for anybody you work for the family store and against his wishes uh, she ended up getting a job at Wendy's uh, unfortunately she would only get to work there one day she would be murdered after her first shift was over uh, there was a time when her parents felt that she was becoming too Americanized, she had went to the prom with a date. Uh, she did have an American boyfriend at the time. His name was Clifford Walker. They did not want her dating an American. Her father had told her that I'm going to arrange a marriage for you. I want you to move back to the West Bank. Uh, you're gonna marry somebody in his family. So basically she would be marrying one of her own family members disgusting family and she obviously did not want to do that he had arranged marriages for all of his daughters and she would be the one next in line to uh, have an arranged marriage forced upon her so there was abuse within the home uh, it was reported to the school authorities that tina came to school with bruises on her face and her arms now, they went to talk to her. I'm not sure if she kind of said, yeah, my father put his hands on me, or maybe she denied it. But they interviewed a couple of Tina's sisters who were still uh, living in home at the time and still going to school. And two of the sisters told the guidance counselor when she was asking them uh, about if there was any abuse in the home, asking them uh, if, if their father was putting his hands on Tina. 
In the interviews, they basically said that Tina was a whore. Uh, she was becoming too Americanized and she deserved to die. They st her own sister said that. After the interview, the guidance counselor that was talking to the sisters, she told her co-workers, it's almost like they want her to be stoned to death. That's how they spoke. Some kind of barbaric, uh, medieval uh, uh, killing. However, I don't know if, the, uh, if that escalated any further by contacting the police because apparently uh, it seems like that did not happen. So on the night of December, excuse me, November 6th, 1989, Tina had came home. She had just got off of work. She just got a job at Wendy's. Now, little did the Isas know was that the FBI had bugged her house previously because it was suspected that Zane was a member of the ANO, which is uh, basically it's the uh, Abu Nidal uh, organization, which they're aligned with uh, terrorist activities uh, on the behalf of the you know liberation of Palestine and all of that. So the FBI... They got bugs in their apartment and they're listening into their conversations. And in the prior months before her murder, the FBI could hear Zane saying that, yeah, I should kill my daughter. And he could hear the conversations with uh, on the phone with his other daughters saying, oh, yeah, she deserves to die. Now, don't ask me why they didn't arrest him then. Maybe they thought, ah, he's just talking nonsense. I have no clue. But on that night, there was audio recording of Tina coming home from work. And as soon as she comes home, her father says to her, quote, here, listen, my daughter, do you know that this is the last day tonight? You are going to die. And Tina looks like, look at him like he's crazy. He's like, what? And she said, and Zane says, quote, do you know you're going to die tonight? And as he's telling her that they start speaking in a mixture of English, Portuguese and Arabic. Um, I think that's the language that the Palestinians speak. And there, you know, then there's a, bu a bunch of commotion. Maria, her own mother, starts looking through her bag. What's this? What's that? Why you got this in your bag? Why you got that in your bag? Blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden... Zane picks up a boning knife and starts stabbing his daughter and she starts screaming and she's asking her mother for help. And then her mother says, quote, help. What help? Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? And she starts like as he's stabbing her, she's coughing and just pleading for her life. And then Zane says, quote, Die, die quickly, die quickly, little one, die, my daughter, die. Now, by the time the FBI in the morning were able to listen to the tape, it had already been too late. Tina had already been killed. This is the apartments where they used to live. So after he kills his own daughter, he calls the police and says, oh, my daughter tried to attack me. Uh, she was she's been acting crazy over the last few months. Like she came over here demanding five thousand dollars and she had the knife in her hands and she attacked me. So I defended myself. I took the knife from her and then I stabbed her. However. Little did they know that her murder was actually caught on audio recording. So once the FBI listened to the audio recording, they contacted the prosecuting office here in St. Louis and gave them the tapes. And immediately, Zane and Maria Issa were arrested and charged with her murder. Now, during the court proceedings, the prosecutor, after listening to the tapes, 
Oh, they're going for the death penalty. You better believe they're going for the death penalty. Now, the trial was postponed for about a year because the defense attorney was trying to get the audio recording of the murder thrown out. And of course, the judge denied that request. And Maria and Zine, Zane Issa were put on trial. Now, this apartment complex is going through renovation right now, so I can't get on the property. I kind of already tried and I was kicked out. But as you can see, their address used to be 3759 Delore. So that's, that's 3757, okay? So we're gonna walk around this building right here. But uh, during the trial, the disgusting pig that her mother, Maria Issa was, she basically during the trial tells the judge, get this, I, I when I read this, I jumped out of my shoes. She tells the judge, why are we being punished for something that my daughter did? Like as in it was her fault that they had to murder her. And another disgusting facet of this case. Now I can't say, I can't say for all of the family members on whether they were for or against this crime, but a couple of the sisters were uh, one of them. Uh, by the name of Fatima, basically said her that her sister deserved to die. Deserved to get killed. Two of the sisters said that. They called her a whore and they said, yeah, that's what, that's what you get. That's our culture. Now, basically the murder occurred in one of those two buildings right straight ahead of you, right where the camera's pointing. That address would be 3769. And that address right there would be 3759. I can't see the number, but by me looking around, that's pretty much that has to be the building where the murder occurred. This murder is just as just as bad than the Saeed sisters murder. to murder your own daughter and you hold her arms down and obviously the proof and that the mother held the daughter down was that the daughter had very little if any defensive wounds on her arms and her hands the kinds of wounds that would be inflicted on one fighting for their life Tina Issa had dreams of becoming a pilot, maybe from all the flying that she did as a kid, you know, going from Brazil to Palestine, to Puerto Rico, to the United States. But later on, I believe in 1993 or so, Zine Issa died in prison. And then the scumbag mother she ended up uh, getting her her sentence uh, commuted to life without parole. She died in 2014. Boy, do I wish they had been executed. Boy, do I wish that sentence would have been carried out. But at least the at least the father was taken out early because he was already in bad health. He had a bad limp, and he was telling one of the detectives that, uh, oh, my daughter would abuse me and she kicked me in my bad leg. Absolute scumbag family, to say the least. And, to, and for you, you to say that your own sister deserved to die. That's, that's horrible, that is absolutely horrible. This is the Sacred Heart Cemetery. We're just a little bit north of downtown St. Louis. I was actually quite surprised that she was buried at a Catholic cemetery. I don't know who handled the funeral, but it is a little bit telling on the part of that family.
And I am not saying that all of her sisters or her siblings were for her murder, but to have any of them condone such violence, it's disgusting and it's unreal. I hate that she has his name on her stone. This little stone tucked behind these shrubs. All these people that pass by every day on this busy street, they probably don't even know who this girl's, who she was in life and her story. Uh, anger and sorrow is all I feel right now. By the way, if anybody lives in the St. Louis area, I left a bird feeder. That was the closest area that I could leave one in those trees right there. If you're in the area, stop by. Fill it up. I can't do it by myself. All right, rest in peace to Tina. Her friends called her Tina, and that's what she's known by to me. And to those dirtbag sisters that you condoned your own flesh and blood being murdered, what kind of horrible existence, what kind of horrible, wretched, foul life do you lead to condone such a horrible crime against your own flesh and blood. Would you want that to happen to your daughters? If you answered yes, you don't belong on this planet. I'm just calling it the way it is. Not this country, this planet. All right, guys, Lamont at large. See you on the next vlog. Peace out.